From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. My, once again, there is so much that we want to share with, with you today. And every time I pick up the newspaper, I'm enlightened by what uh, this world has to say about certain situations. Uh, Jerry, our director, and I were talking just before we came on a moment ago, talking about everything that the president has done that is really good for this country. We named about three of them. The stock market, oh, we haven't had one like this so good in I don't know when. Secondly, increased jobs. In fact, there's so many jobs out there, we don't have enough people to fill them. And this is one that really blesses me, strengthening our military. You know, around the world, they were losing confidence in how strong America really was. But now they're really waking up to saying they're number one again. And I want to say thank you, Mr. President, for all that you have helped us to do in this country. Thank you for all the good things that you've done. But there's one thing, you know, that you did. <laughs> My husband is going to talk about this, and uh, it that has to do with uh, North Korea. And he's got a reason for saying, oh, I wish the president wouldn't do that. But uh, he's done so many good things. But we are going to include this one and show you why it won't work that the president was trying to do. Our first headline here, North Korea rebuilds structures at the rocket site. Well, you know what? Trump was hoping to have a deal whereby they would uh, reach uh, denuclearization. Well, is it happening? Take a look at this next one. U.S.-North Korea activity incompatible with denuclearization. Uh -huh. What they're doing is the opposite of what they said they would do. It's not happening. North Korea resumes work at the rocket site. Well, I know that our president's keeping his eye on there, but uh, Jack's going to tell you why he thought it would not work. United States, no illusions about possible North Korean missile activity. <laughs> we don't have any illusions, but you know what he's trying to do? North Korea, uh, Kim, Courts Seoul. He's trying to put North and South Korea together. That's his goal, but he wants to be the one in control. North Korea's Kim to meet Putin as tensions rise with the United States. There it. There we go. With Putin. Yes, absolutely. And uh, I know that Jack really wants to come in here and tell you why he knew that North Korea would not meet the demands of the United States that our president was asking him to do on denuclearization. Uh, Jack, enlighten us now according to the Bible. President Trump, I appreciate you. And I want you to know that I've memorized this entire Bible. Billy Graham one day sent me a letter and he said, listen, you always on television and I'm shocked at your Bible knowledge. Envious. I got so many. Ronald Reagan, past president of the United States of America, called me one day and said, I've made some decisions, and some of them weren't the wisest. But he said, I've been listening to you, Dr. Van Epe, on television, and you know the Bible better than any man I've ever listened to. And from now on, I promise you I'm going to call you and make any decisions I make about what's coming and what I should do about it. And you give me guidance from the Word of God. Boy, that moved my heart. We right now have Dr. McVitie. He's got this new college in Canada. $90 million. He said, no one's going to graduate from this school until they've studied the works of Dr. Jack Fanny. And over and over and over, Dr. J. Vern McGee, 
when I preached for him and he saw th hundreds of these movie stars get saved, he said, I've never seen such power in preaching. You've got a book on this man called, they call him the Walking Bible, and I've changed it to the Belgian Bible Bumpshaw. Amen. I like that title. Now, I say all that to say this. I was so worried because you've done such many wonderful things. You know, this thing that you put up the wall, you know what a wonderful Chaldean said to me the other day? Oh, please pray that this president gets elected again. We feel that because we have been suffering so much under the terrorists of Iran, ISIS. And she says, they're killing our people everywhere. And this is the man that's put up a wall to stop these illegal terrorists in our country. And I say, you're right. Thank you, President Trump. Now, you've got a great man as your vice president, a wonderful Christian. He's even got a Bible study going and invites senators and everybody once a week. Thank God he's there to help you. Because when you started monkeying around with North Korea, I was concerned. Why? Right now, this guy's making his missiles. He's, went to, he's gone to talk to Putin, hooking up with Russia now. Now, yeah. Rexel and I traveled the world. What a beautiful sweetheart. Look oh, at her. Well, Look at her. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> I'm something for God because of this girl, the most spiritual girl God ever created. Thank you, sweetheart. Oh, Jack. Oh. She means so much to me. So many of these ministers now are in the sex sins. They're running away from their wives. God forgive you, you dirty hypocrites. Get out of the ministry. Right now, complain about the priests. Forget the priests. I said this last week. I want to repeat it. In the Council of Churches, the Protestantism of the nation, they said that 70% of those ministers are into pornography. Getting off sexually, looking at dirty, rotten pictures of these harlots in the magazines. That's not where it ends. I'm a Baptist. And now we find that 700 women were raped by our Baptist ministers. Hypocrites, get out of the ministry. And as I said last week, some of the Methodist ministers are retiring for one reason. They said, you made a new rule. You want to take a stand on the Bible. And we are not allowed to marry men with men. Anything wrong with their decision to say, that's what the church wants. If you don't want to leave, leave. And they left. Hey, don't you know that God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, two major cities? Thousands died because of homosexuality. Right. What is wrong with you people in the churches? And the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil, which was some covered after they heard from the faith. We've got preachers out there, 23 who own Jets from $20 million to $60 million. I promise you when you send money to Jack Fennepe Ministries, not one dollar will ever be spent for anything personal. I've even gone without a salary now in my 14th year. Try to pay the bills with the books and give every dime you send to the work of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to throw out some of the burden of my heart. The Holy Spirit's been coming to me. Sonny, some of you have heard it many times. August 13th, 2017, he came and said, Jack Van Impey, I have been sent from the Holy Father to say that he has appointed you and I, the Holy Spirit, have anointed you to reach the whole world for crap. What? What's going on in America is right now, we're told that by the, and Rick Selby given this later, 
by 30 years from now, there'll be hardly anyone ever going to church anymore. That's how back sudden America is because we've got a bunch of preachers that are pussyfooting. They don't know how to preach a straight message. They give their little sermonettes that make Christianettes. The Bible says, preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season, when they like it, when they don't like it, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. And what are we to preach? He says, speak up against damnable heresies. Damnable heresies, yeah. And doctrines of devils. These same guys are bleeding you people with 20 million, 60 million dollars jet paid for with your money. I have been in the hospital and I have for the rest of my life been told I walk, will have to walk with a cane and a walk. One of these little carts, sometimes a wheelchair. My man who heads up this ministry has had to come and pick me up 14 times in different places because I fell and couldn't get up. But I'm telling you something, nothing's going to stop me. As long as there's one man on this earth who's not saved, does not know Jesus, I will preach until my last breath. I don't want to retire. No matter how bad my health gets, I've got everything that a man could have. I had 65 treatments for cancer. I've had a heart attack. I'm living in there with something to keep the heart beating. I don't care. I'm very old. I just got the most beautiful young woman in the world. While I'm reaching the whole world, now I want to win them. Win them for Jesus. And the Bible says it can happen. Because when Christ returns, after he holds the time of judgment. And all those now in Hades, because they rejected Christ, for while God loves the whole world, the Bible says in John 3, 16, verse 18 says, he that believeth on Christ is not condemned. He that believeth not is condemned already. Verse 36, he that believeth on the Son of God has everlasting life. He that believeth not on the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. And that's in a place called Gehenna, the final penitentiary of souls called hell, which the present Pope Francis says, I reject. I don't believe in it. Even atheists are going to go to heaven. That was not Pope John Paul and Pope Benedict great men. They moved me back to love all my Catholic brothers and sisters. But this guy, the Catholic Church is in trouble. And you know, when the Lord Jesus breaks through the blue to set up the kingdom of heaven and earth, he's not going to set up that kingdom in Rome, Pope Francis. He's going to set it up in Jerusalem. Yeah, the group that people that the world has hated. And God loves the Jew, like I said last week. Jesus said, salvation is of the Jew. And all Israel shall be saved when Jesus returns. Romans eleven twenty seven. Boy, what an hour is coming, Johnny. Yes. Yes, true. And I'll tell you, I'd give anything. And I'm thinking, and I'm going to examine it. My dad was a Belgian. But my mother was born in Belgium, but it was through a Spanish soldier, which would possibly be through the name Piotr, be Jewish, and I'd be proud of it. Mm. Proud. God loves the Jews. And when he sets his kingdom up on earth forever and forever and forever, it's going to be there. Honey, quote the Lord's Prayer, will you? Oh, We've been sure praying for it for 2,000 years. Yes, Let's I will. You know, saying. Jake, I understand why they call you the walking Bible. And in just a moment, we're going to have our offer about the Bible. But I love probably one of our favorite verses. God gave to us while he was on earth. Our Father who art in heaven, Jesus said, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Amen. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation. 
but deliver us from evil. Whoa, we need that, don't we, today? Oh, but deliver us from evil. Now, For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Forever, forever, forever. And you know, when he cuts back with his people as he comes and they hit the ground, you know what he says in this book? Boy, this is wonderful. On you that have been in heaven with me and you've received the rewards after the rapture. Now you're coming back with me. On you, the second death has no power. The second death is hell. But you know, if the Bible says that at the rapture, the dead in Christ rise first, then we which are alive and remain, we haven't died, are caught up with them in the twinkling of an eye. And then we get the five rewards. But we will not only miss the second death, we will also miss the first death. The only people in the world are excellent Amen. that will not ever die. True. First or second death. But all who die in Jesus are coming back. Amen. To live in that holy city in Jerusalem forever and forever and forever. Oh, oh Jack, that was so wonderful. Wasn't that a wonderful message? No wonder they called him the walking Bible. And so many of our senators and those in authority have called and they depend on him as the walking Bible. Well, that's our offer of the week, the Jack Van Impey Prophecy Bible. There's so much in here that you really, that he has books in here added to explain the Bible. You need to have it. All right, here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it through this commercial. Presenting the third edition of the Jack Vanapy Prophecy Bible, this beautiful burgundy leather-bound edition has been created exclusively for the friends of Jack Vanapy Ministries. Dr. Vanapy has highlighted all 10,385 prophetic verses and coded each passage in the margins so you'll know at a glance the event to which the prophecy refers. The Jack Vanapy Prophecy Bible King James Version features the words of Christ in red and includes the program Dr. Vanapy used to categorize and memorize over 15,000 verses of scripture. Also contained in the pages of this outstanding third edition are three books by Dr. Vanapi, Your Future, an A to Z Index to Prophecy, Revelation Revealed Verse by Verse, and Daniel Final End Time Mysteries Unsealed, also verse by verse. This special Bible would make a great gift for any occasion. Make the call or write to us. You need to have this wonderful prophecy Bible. Now, friends, we're going to hurry on here. Boy, our time just seems to evaporate. But Trump was uh, maybe wrong in North Korea, but he's been right about where the Democrats are going right now. I'd like for you to take a look, please, at this. Understanding the Democrats plunge to the radical socialist left. Well, you know what this article says? The party is long dead. A resurrection uh, by John F. Kennedy or Herbert Hoover would not recognize or even understand the present Democrats are going to a socialist area. And here we see over 10,000 illegal aliens in the United States from terrorist-sponsored countries. Our president says, we cannot have this happen. Thank you for the war. Yes, this is an emergency. And then going on, uh, certainly he's being very cautious about Russia right now and China. The Pentagon, okay, wants more resources to counter Russia, China, Threats, threats. Well, here's a startling one. U.S. to move fast on hypersonic weapons like China and Russia. The STRATCOM chief had to say, and then going on, China threat rises to NATO's agenda. Whoa. We're not the only ones that are paying attention to what's going on out there. NATO's very concerned Those also. Those are the headlines of today, folks. U.S. commander, Russian modernization efforts threaten to erode U.S. military advantage in Europe. Oh, my. Keep our eye on Russia. Russia warns U.S. troops in Venezuela will stay. They're telling us this for as long as needed. Well, Russia, China, buddies there, market arms to golf buyers. And China is threat to the world, says dissonant writer. My, oh, my. Can you believe it? Everybody's paying attention. Well, Turkey, uh, Aragon stands by Russia missile deal. He's saying, uh, 
Well, you know what? We're going to go along with Russia. Iran president says U.S. leader of world terrorism. Oh, can you believe it? He says our president is that. Here's a very good question. Is it too late to counter China's rise? The Pentagon seeks drone-fired lasers to destroy nuclear-armed missiles. You know, friends, there's so much to consider out there. And I am grateful that we have a president who says we are not going to be number two. We are going to stand up to what's happening. Now, Jack, let me just say this. Russia, China, is there going to be a war? Ladies and gentlemen, 65 years ago as a young man, because Billy Graham pushed me to go, I preached a message called the coming war with Russia. I preached this in 1,100 places in the world because everyone was requesting it. Well, here is what happens. The Bible says in Ezekiel 38 and 39, Gog, Magog, Meshach, Tubal, and Rosh are going to lead the battle. Who are they? Well, Gog is the leader. Meshach and Tubal is Moscow and Tobolsk after being interpreted. And all the Orient Revelation uh, book says is going with them. China, North Korea, all of them. Then there's going to be Gomer, Germany, Tagarma, Turkey, Iran, all of them. It's going to be the bloodiest war in the world. The blood will flow to the bridles of the horses for 200 miles. When it's over, it'll take seven months just to bury the deceased bodies. And most of them are going to be Muslim terrorists. You can thank this president that he's trying to have this program wow, that keeps yeah. illegal people out of here, terrorists who want to kill Americans. Right now, the same terrorist crowd has 50 different places where they're going to move in the world to kill every Christian there is. We are in trouble. Thank you, President Trump. You want to protect all of us. And the dear Chaldeans are saying, please pray that he gets in again. Now, will it be bloody? Here's the atomic war of history. Psalm 97, 3, Isaiah 66, 15, Ezekiel 20, 47, Joel chapter 2, verses 3 and 30, Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 18, Malachi 4, 1, Revelation 8, 7. A third part of the trees was burned. All green grass was burned. The greatest atomic war in history. Nothing like it's ever happened and nothing again will ever happen because the Lord Jesus comes right at the close of the final battle. Armageddon says it's over. And he says, from now on, none of you have to worry about the second death, eternal life. Amen. Amen. Eternal life, Jack. And there's one way that we can have eternal life with the Lord. Have you opened your heart to the Lord? Jesus said, come unto me. He wants to be your Savior. He died for you. That's why he came and was crucified on Calvary, taking our sins. Will you open your heart to Jesus right now as Jack prays this wonderful prayer, saying, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Come into my heart. Will you pray with him now, Jack? I'm spoken, but I can be tender too. I love Jesus. As just a 12-year-old boy, our Catholic family all knelt on our knees and received Jesus. And I grew in the Lord. I went to college and got 16 doctorates. I fell in love with Jesus. Oh, how he suffered on that cross. Blood flowing from the face as they battered it, from the nails where they pierced his hands and feet, from the Roman cat of nine tails that ripped the body open. And he did it for you. So you could live forever, eternal life, Father. I want what you did for me, Jesus. I've had a hardened heart for too long. Today I receive what you're offering me, Jesus. I receive you now into my heart. Come in. Thank you for dying for my sin. Amen. Amen. Did you pray that prayer? Jesus said, whoever will call on me, 
I will come in and be their savior. Well, let me know. I'll send you this little booklet, absolutely free. First steps in a new direction. I want to hear from you. You just became God's child. Our mailing address is Jack Benjamin Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. Remember to ask for your free copy of the booklet, First Steps, when you write. Our address, once again, is Jack Penipi Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. And now, once again, I want to say, don't put off ordering the wonderful offer of the week. And here's our announcer, once again, to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella. My friend, to order the Jack Vanapie Prophecy Bible, and oh, what a gift. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free, 24 hours a day, 1-800-JBI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $59.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $59.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rexella. Thank you so very much, Chuck, and I do want to encourage you to make that telephone call or to write to us. You know, Jack has so many wonderful things in here that you really, really need. It helps to explain the Bible, not change it, explain it. So make the call, and I'm sure that you'll say thank you, Lord, for Jack Benipi Prophecy Bible. I want to leave you with a very, very good thought, and it's about God's Word. God's Word is a life preserver that keeps the soul from sinking into a sea of troubles. Amen. How good Amen. trust in the Word of God. We're going to be looking forward to being in your home again next week. Till then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very, very much. Bye-bye.